grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God selected as the basis of our message was taken from John chapter 8, beginning in verse 31. Jesus then said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This is the word of God. You may be seated. We're celebrating Reformation today. We've got the red parents out. We've got the red banner out. The boys and girls sang the mighty words. What is the Reformation? Well, it was a time, 500 years ago, when the church... Now we're talking about the Roman Catholic Church because that was the only game in town as far as Western civilization is concerned. First there was the Eastern Orthodox Church over in the, in the Middle East that was not part of the Roman Catholic Church. And there was the, the Coptic, Coptic Church which was in North Africa and Egypt. That also was not part of the Roman Catholic Church. But the European Roman Catholic Church had wandered from the truth. Now, before I offend any further any of my Roman Catholic friends, let me stop right here and tell you how much I love them and how much I thank God for them. We have in our school enrolled a number of Roman Catholic children. Praise God. Now, they're there because they trust that the Word of God is being rightly taught to their children. We even have a kindergarten teacher who belongs to St. Elizabeth's, for goodness sakes. But in her service here, she has pledged to teach the Word of God as we confessed it. And not to introduce anything into the classroom that is not faithful to the confessions of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and to Holy Scripture. Praise God. And she does it gladly. And when I question her about the Roman Catholic Church and all the problems that it had stemming back from 500 years ago. And I say, what do you think about that? She says, I don't know anything about it. Because, praise God, the Roman Catholic Church isn't quite as confused over the issues of salvation as it once was. Now, we would not go so far as to put our blessing upon your worship here. Because, technically, they haven't changed their doctrine. But, practically speaking, they have changed much of their preaching. Praise God. We even have some Roman Catholic family members who have children enrolled in our school sitting as advisory delegates to our school board because their children are in our school. They ought to have something to say about what's happening in our school. We thank God for them. And in the Lutheran Confessions, we say that no matter what church being denomination you might belong to, if God's Word is being read, then the Holy Spirit comes along with the Word of God and has the power to create repentance and faith. Even if you don't belong to the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, you certainly can still be a repenting, believing Christian. So what I'm about to tell you now is mostly history, but it's a history that we need to understand. For you see, 500 years ago, things weren't quite as sweet and simple as they are. 500 years ago, the authority of God's Word had been supplanted by the authority of the papacy and church traditions and canon law. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you know that in the United States we have lower courts and we have higher courts and then we have the Supreme Court, right? And once the Supreme Court rules on something, that's it. There is no appeal after the Supreme Court has made a ruling, correct? Well, where in the hierarchy of church authority belongs the Bible? Well, in the Roman Catholic Church, the Bible still sits down here, while church traditions and the papacy and canon law are up here. Still to this day. But that is not what Jesus said. He says, if you continue in my word, my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 500 years ago, the Roman Catholic Church had not continued in the Word of God, which 
says plainly. It's so obvious. We read it in, in Romans today. And I'll read it again one more time. It says, For we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. There it is. What saves you is your faith. That faith comes to you as a gift from God. Not the things you do. But that truth of the Word of God had gotten confused. It had been obscured by other church doctrines and teachings which were not founded upon Scripture. Now there were many. Some of them had to do with something called monasticism, which meant that an average person working uh, an average job is not as holy as somebody who uh, has forsaken the world and gone off and joined a monastery or gone to a nunnery, a convent, and uh, devotes themselves to prayer 24 hours a day, you know, and fasting and, and poverty. Well, those people are more righteous and more holy than the average worker on the street. That was a teaching in Roman Catholicism that even to this day still persists. And it's not true. In 1 John chapter 1 it says if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it says here, but now the righteousness of God, that's perfect holiness, has been manifested apart from works of the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness which is through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. In other words, you believe in Jesus? Then the righteousness of God is upon you. The perfection of the holiness of God is yours and it has nothing to do whether you're a farmer or a plumber or a truck driver or a monk living in a castle somewhere, praying 17 hours a day. The righteousness of God is upon you as a gift from God, given to you freely by the faith that God gives to us. That's only one of the problems, this business about monasticism and building up merit like spiritual brownie points with God that was troubling the church 500 years ago. And even the greater falsehood that was troubling the church 500 years ago was the whole concept of God's grace and righteousness itself. For you see, 500 years ago, and even to this very day, technically within the Catholic Church, the doctrine is when you are baptized into Christ Jesus, at that moment all of your sins are taken care of, and you receive an infusion of grace called gratia infusion. And that infusion of grace now is like giving to you the power from God to live holy and righteous lives. But, this is the false teaching now. If you don't use that power to live that holy, righteous life, keeping your soul spotless by obedience to God, or by doing perfect works of penance and fully confessing all of your sins, if you don't do all of that, then over a lifetime, your soul is collecting sin, impurity. You're not righteous anymore. You're a soiled vessel. And therefore, the Roman Catholic Church came up with this teaching that said, when the time comes for you to die, and you haven't used that grace of God perfectly, and your, sin is pollute, your soul is polluted with unconfessed sin and unrepentant sin, if, if you are... If you're living imperfectly before God, then you're not ready to come before Him. You have to go to a place of punishment.